my hair is just not working with me today. Here we go. Hey guys, my name is Cynthia and welcome to my channel, A Quiet Praise, where we talk about faith, life, and perspective. And as you can see by today's title, it's going to be about my one year post-baptism journey. So I got baptized on February 9th, 2020, right before COVID. Thank God we had an amazing, wonderful women's retreat. And I went there just knowing that I was going to get revived, going knowing that I was going to be renewed, just really... It's kind of always good to do faith camps or like to conferences or meetings just because you get like this renewed energy, this new spark to continue working for God. I had no way, no intentions, no thought that I was going to get baptized, but the Holy Spirit really led me to do that. I felt compelled. I felt just the Holy Spirit touching me and telling me that I needed to do that. I do have another video on that, so you can definitely check that out. My husband didn't even know that I was going to get baptized. My mom didn't know. My children didn't know. It was just kind of like a thing spur of the moment. And I think those are just the best moments with God. The ones that you don't really expect, the ones that you don't know like where the heck they came from because they are genuine, they are honest, they are raw, and you're not doing them for anybody else but yourself. So the reason why I got baptized was, and by the way, I do have my journal because I wanna try not to forget things that I want to say. Um, I just wanted to be washed clean. I wanted to be new. I wanted to start, you know, like a new start, a fresh start. Now I knew that God had already forgiven me for my sins way in the past. I got divorced in 2019, I believe. And then after that, for several months, my life just kind of went down a bit. Thank God that I was able to come back to reality and kind of continue my journey and I didn't move away from the church or from God at that time. Um, but I felt that by being baptized again, it was my physical manifestation, my sharing with everybody else that I know that I'm a sinner and that I know the only one that can take away my sin is Jesus Christ. And so I didn't know very many of the people at this conference. I didn't know most of them. I mean, only the group of the ladies that came with me at that conference but everybody else like I didn't know so I honestly felt I was doing it for me like this was legit a conversation with me and Jesus and a decision and like a pact that we made not for anybody else mind you it was freezing that day and the water was super super cold so but let me tell you once I got into that water it was like I didn't care everything was just like totally gone it was like in the background blurred and it was just an amazing amazing experience I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna put a picture up here um, they did take a video but I don't have any of that this is the only picture that I have of that day and I think it's really cool that you don't even see my face or anything like that because it just shows it's just genuine it's just like I just love the picture because it's not like about oh how my hair looks or how I was you know if I had makeup or it's just like being in that water being renewed and having a fresh start so i didn't expect to be perfect after that i guess i kind of thought that things were going to be like you know like i was going to be on this right path and i wasn't going to make mistakes but very quickly i realized that i am still a sinner even though i got baptized that i'm still not perfect and that i'm going to mess up i'm going to have ups and downs so that's an issue that i have with myself that i can i need to continue working on is that once i have my mind on doing something like i expect to be perfect and i know that god doesn't expect me to be perfect the only way i can be made perfect is having through jesus in me who he is made perfect and then with him inside of me i'm able to kind of reflect that perfection if that makes sense so that's an issue that i have with myself i have way too high expectations so i i knew that i wasn't going to be the model christian and i had to come to terms with that knowing that just because i got baptized again does not mean that and i wear skirts most of the time that i'm gonna be like on this high all the time there are times where i'm just like down and sad or angry or stressed or frustrated um and I have seen a growth in that from my baptism because instead of me like dwelling in those negative feelings and like feeding into them and feeling them and there's a lot of people that feel that you should like go into your negative feelings and just kind of go with it and let it go but I and it has nothing to do with crying or being sad like you can be sad but then in your sadness like you need to kneel down or you need to you know stand at, at stop whatever you're doing and pray for God to reveal to you why it is that you're feeling sad and is it worth you feeling sad or angry angry is a better um a better word a better example feeling angry and pray for him to take that anger away because i'm not going to be dwelling in my anger all day nine times out of ten if not all of them every time i pray for god to do something for me to help me take away these negative feelings these negative thoughts 
he does it. And a lot of times it probably happens like overnight, like, you know, he kind of just wipes that away. And I know that it's God and nobody else because I would not be able to get rid of those feelings myself. So going on a tangent there, but um, after my baptism, I had to realize that I wasn't perfect, that I was gonna have these negative thoughts, these negative feelings sometimes. And I really held on to prayer as my resource, as my coping mechanism for all of those things. Um, I felt new after it. I knew that I was redeemed before my baptism, but this just kind of solidified it for me. It's kind of like when somebody gets married and you're already married, right? But even before you get married, you wanna make sure that you love that person, that you have a relationship with that person. The ring is just a symbol of it, right? So that's kind of what the baptism was for me. Sorry. I had to stop the video really quick. So baptism was a way for me to solidify my relationship, my pact, my marriage vows with Christ. Um, I have failed after that and I will probably continue failing in certain things, but that's okay because that's the beauty about our God, that he loves us, that he knows that we're not perfect and that he takes us back every single time. It's just, it's an amazing thing. And every single day I wake up being thankful, praising God because he loves me so much that he gives me that mercy every single day that even though I messed up yesterday, I can continue again today. And that is a I can't even express that's i'm just so thankful that i get the opportunity to do things all over again and do better than what i did yesterday i've also learned to hear god's voice more clearly before i used to just pray about things and i felt like sometimes he wouldn't listen or he wouldn't hear me um i always knew that he was there and i've always kind of known um that the answer is yes no or maybe not right now but i've learned to be extremely patient like i've learned patience is a virtue and then i've also learned that when you ask god to give you patience sometimes he may sneak in little trials little examples to show you how to be patient so i praise him for that because he's patient with me and he's teaching me how to be patient with others and myself too ever since i got baptized when i've been listening to music i feel like i listen to the verses to the lyrics more closely and a lot of times I get emotional because I apply those lyrics to myself and um, when I st first started learn or hearing the reckless love the the song reckless love in the beginning like I was like why is it saying reckless like God is not reckless and so but like listening to it and applying it to myself after I got baptized the way I take the song is that is it, it's reckless in that he will do whatever it takes. Like whatever it takes, it doesn't matter what. He will do it to try to get you. He will do it to try to reach me. And, you know, he will break down any wall. He will tear down any lie. Like it's just it that song really, really hit me. And so, you know, that's one of the things that I definitely have been doing different after my baptism is that I've really been focusing on lyrics when I listen to things and being purposeful when I do things, when I listen to things. You know, am I listening to a song just because of the beat? Am I actually listening to the words you know are they speaking truth into my life and if they're not then i move it away and i go on to the next thing my personal relationship with christ has only deepened since my baptism and i'm only focused on him on nobody else another thing that i know for sure um during my baptism is i have been extremely humbled I've just learned to give everything to Christ, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And he has truly humbled me. And I pray that he continues humbling me even more. And sometimes I tell him like, and I have a video that's called Dangerous Prayers. You guys can check that out. One of the dangerous prayers is that you need to ask God to break you down. You need to like ask him to tear you apart so that you can be rebuilt with him running through your veins. So where from the ground up, I'm living for him. I have him through the way I speak, through the way I see people, through the way I, I hear things, through the way I act. So I've been asking God, to humble me to continue humbling me and things that i used to do before ways that i used to react to people before i don't even do that now and it's because it just comes natural to me like if somebody offends me i will still pray for them or i will still say hey i'm sorry if i offended you or if i made you react a certain way i've learned humility through jesus christ through my relationship with him through my walk with him and i am not a perfect christian christian and i will always say this in every one of my videos um it's i don't have I don't want to say I read my Bible like 
one, two, three chapters every single day because sometimes I just can't do that. Um, and that's one of the things that I've learned to not be so hard on myself. I will do what I can do for that day. So I'll read my devotionals. I will pray during, you know, the day I have this app that I found called Prayer Mate and it is awesome. And it just gives you different ways to pray and it reminds you of different prayers during the day and that helps me to be held accountable. I really want you guys to know that your daily relationship with Christ is going to be different every single day because I know it is for me being a working mom, having a, a, a home school child you know my husband's going to school too and then having a 19 year old stepson who's doing his own thing and trying to figure out his own journey with christ is really difficult definitely even our tough moments in our christian walk will be used for light will be used for something good whether for you or maybe for you to use it as a testimony for somebody else it will be used i promise you everything in your life has a purpose during my my baptism i've learned to be patient and that's absolutely true um knowing that god is still working when in me is absolutely true also i would love to sit here and say since my baptism last year i've learned to do this and this and this and i've been doing this and i stopped doing this it's just journey it's just a journey for everybody it's different little tiny baby steps yesterday not that i do this but this is an example yesterday i said five curse words but today you know what i only said three yesterday i only prayed for five minutes but today i prayed for 10. yesterday i woke up really upset and cranky at my husband he didn't do anything but i didn't want to deal with him and today i prayed before i woke up and i was able to see my husband in a loving light yesterday i yelled at my kids and i really didn't mean to do that but today i was able to apologize to them god has shown me humility and we were able to do that so little things like that we need to celebrate even the little tiny moments in our relationship with Christ. <laughs> what is it? Um, I'm okay, I'll be there in a minute. You just finished eating a pizza. No, I just to okay, so I'll be there. Here? Yes, she's here. I'll be there in a minute. Perfect example, not being upset at your son when he comes and interrupts your video because it is just part of life. Also, I have been doing this for a while, but this is just also confirmation since my baptism accepting his will in my life there's been several years now that i have learned to pray lord let your will be done in my life not my will I'll give you a perfect example i was praying for a job and i was praying 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 and the whole time i was just like lord let it be, be your will let it be your plans guide me in your ways and would i love to have the promotion yes would i love to have the raise in my salary yes but god knows more than i do we just finished buying this house we've been in here i think for two months um in my previous video i said that i've been studying for my licensure um to be a licensed clinical social worker and so i got news on friday that i did not get the job but i praise god for it and when i spoke to my husband he was like oh babe i'm really sorry and i'm like no no it's okay like it's fine i prayed to god i asked him to show me to guide me to lead me to open and close the doors that he wants in my life and i praise god because he closed that door because you know what if i would have had that new job i would have had new training which means i wouldn't have as much time for me to study for my test so i just praise god because he knows what is best for me so i thank god for that so accepting god's will for my life has definitely been a big thing and it's just being confirmed every single day. I see the way God has moving in my life. And it's amazing because once you give your reins, like you give the reins to God and let him control it, he will do amazing things in your life. So 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21, and this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you also, not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a good conscience toward God. And so that doesn't mean that because I got re-baptized that all the dirt is gonna be wiped away from me. That just means that I'm going to have a good conscience with God. That means that my relationship with God is gonna be solidified and it's going to only gonna get from better to best that clearly tells me that i'm still dirty that i'm still a sinner but i'm washed in the blood of jesus christ that i'm going to be living for jesus christ and not myself and this also reminds me that i do not need to be perfect i also find another verse that i want to share with you guys acts 22 verse 16 it says and now what are you waiting for get up be baptized and wash your sins away calling on his name so if you guys have been baptized before that doesn't mean that you can't get baptized again what this verse is telling me is that what are you waiting for like 
you don't need to wait. How many times do pastors or preachers in your churches do a calling? I know they do it at my church and you're waiting for one more person to get up before you do and then you'll get up. No, what are you waiting for? This verse is telling you, what are you waiting for? You don't need to wait for your friend or that other person or like a group of people to get up. Get up by yourself. As soon as they ask that calling and you feel it in your heart, you feel it in your spirit that you want to give your life, you want to rededicate your life to Christ, stand up. The verse is telling you, what are you waiting for? Get up, be baptized, wash your sins away, calling on his name. Who's name is that it's Jesus's name we're gonna get baptized through water but if you just get baptized through water and you don't do it for Jesus then you're just literally gonna be a wet Christian the key to that verse is that you're doing it on his name calling on his name to help you after you get baptized so that you can wipe away those sins because we can't do it ourselves friends and the last verse that I want to share with you guys is found in Galatians chapter 3 verse 27 it says for all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ friends I don't know about you, but I want to have an intimate relationship with Christ. I want to be clothed with him. I want to have that robe of righteousness that only comes through knowing him. And these were just three little verses that share about baptism. But what I wanted to let you guys know with this video is that whether you're baptized for the first time or you are rebaptized, you are reborn again, your journey with Christ will never stop and it will never be perfect because we're not perfect because we're sinners. And as long as we know that, that, and we know that we can only be made perfect through Jesus Christ there's nothing else that we can do looking back at a year after my baptism I praise God that I did it I do not have any regrets and I know that my journey is still yet to continue and I hope that this really uplifts you guys that this really gives you motivation gives you the desire to go ahead and rededicate your lives to Jesus because the fun is just about to happen like we know that we're living in the last days and I cannot I cannot be left behind. So I hope that you guys are blessed, that you guys enjoy this video, you give it a thumbs up. Make sure if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe below. If you're new here to my channel, I talk about things like this and some other things also. If you feel like this is something that God is calling you to do, do not wait. Like the Bible verse says, do it today. What are you waiting for? All right, guys, that is it for today. I will see you again next time.